Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast. All the stuff that we did not get to during the course of the show today. And uh, Betty Rock and Gavin working feverishly to uh, bring you uh, audio for her story. Why don't we start with you today, uh, oh. Lady Rock? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Let's just start there because mine's a little heavier and I, I always know oh, you we hate the end transition. On a heavy note? Well, I know you just well, hate then we're the transition. Go to both birthdays. Uh, there that's is that too. Be difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, but, that's just your fault for doing two. Yeah. Should I do birthdays and then you end the podcast on a really down, oh my goodness. Debbie Downer no? Well, I don't know about that. Uh, let me see. Let me think if I have How any... Debbie Downer is it? On I mean, a scale of one to ten. Could you pick a, a happier one? No. Uh, no. Why it, do you it's have real to stuff, always do Because it's real Downer. stuff going on. It's real life stuff, man. It was, uh, you know, I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this was a weird story. Um, that seems like it could have been from a James Bond movie, but yesterday, 2,600 people were hurt, nine people died, as pagers used by Hezbollah, which is a terrorist group, uh, to communicate all simultaneously blew up at the same time. And Betty, you had watched a little bit of the story. Yeah, they had some security footage of when it happened, and crazy. one was in a grocery store, one was at a bank or something, and I mean, the, you can see the guy looking down at his pager, which is funny to say pager, because right. those were big back in, like, what, the early 90s? Right. But he looks down because his pager's going off, and when he does, it just explodes. Well, the thing about it is, too, is they the terrorist group, and it's important to remember that. This isn't like some random thing, like trying to target civilians. Uh, it was a terrorist group, and this is how they carry out their plots, is they use these because uh, phones became a liability to them. And so this was what's really weird. Uh, Israel is uh, the biggest... Um, I hate to use the word suspect, um, but the people that most people think carried this out uh, because they had been talking about a thing called supply chain uh, attack. And this is where the theory is that Hezbollah had ordered these pagers. Uh, Israel intercepted them, rigged them with explosives, then sent them to them and then coordinated this attack to hit. And I know there are going to be people that are freaking out today and are like, oh my gosh, Israel is now a terrorist group. And it's 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 just, I mean, this is the problem in this world is that you're fighting terrorism with terrorism. You know, you're, you know, trying to injure people every day because they're trying to injure you. And it, it's, it's, it's really sad. And there were uh, like innocent people too that got caught up in this and the, that, uh, no, that always happens in these wars. No one gets out unscathed, and that's that's a problem, you know. Um, here's the the bigger problem with this, though, is after this happens, Hezbollah re- releases a statement uh, and said it would continue its operations to support Gaza, and they vowed for a reckoning for Israel, you know. And it, it just keeps that cycle going. It just perpetuates that violence and that hate. But this is the thing that all of the lunatic fringe Americans that are, you know, chanting from the river to the sea don't understand. If, not Lebanon, but if Hamas, if uh, Hezbollah, if all these terrorist organizations stopped attacking Israel, if they said, you know what, we're not doing this anymore, we're just done, there would be peace. Mm -hmm. Israel is not going to be the aggressor and continue to attack them. And people don't understand that. But if Israel stops, these other organizations want to create genocide on Israel. They keep people keep lobbying that on Israel. Like all Americans are like, they're gen- creating genocide. No, th- real genocide and inside of their religious beliefs are the eradication of Jews. You know, and so like again, if Hezbollah stopped, terrorism stops. It doesn't continue with Israel. Mm -hmm. And that's the part of this equation that people, I think, miss and don't understand inside of this, is that Israel would not be trying to uh, be—it's not seeking the extinction of people. They're trying to protect themselves and stop the senseless violence of terrorism that uh, eventually gets to all of us some way. I mean, Twin Towers is a great example. It finally found its way to us, you know, and we've done a good job at preventing a lot of that from continuing to happen in our world, but it happens in these people's worlds every day. And so unfortunately it it is going to continue for them, but it was just really, I mean, uh, a strange story and you I mean like for for Betty to be like oh I need to see this uh you know it's a weird story you mm-hmm. know if it involves like politics or what have you like that so anyway so that's the cu- catch up on that uh here's something here uh I'll do a transition for you rock uh another Is this story be positive 
Uh, yeah. This, okay. this, uh, this is a story someone posted on X um, that people who um, were born before 2000 are sharing the skills that they have that people don't have uh, anymore. Uh, and some of these are interesting, like that Gavin probably wouldn't even understand. But I was Betty, born you were two thousand. Like what? Yeah, but you wouldn't understand cassette tapes, do you? Yeah, you had cassette tapes. Oh, dude, I grew up on. Uh, I knew you grew animal, up on VHS. Animal Jam. Yeah, I grew up the the initial part of probably the first six or seven years where I literally would and then load that sucker really in to my little like colorful little you know cassette player. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you Walk know what in. it's like to put a pencil in one of those things and oh, turn yeah. it to again, to wind it and get it tight. I still own VHS tapes. I know. I know. Uh, do you ever write cursive? Oh, dude, my, it's so weird. Every time I. I write, my mom will say something like, oh, you used to have such beautiful cursive. Uh, I'm like, I don't think that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it we doesn't matter learn, anymore. We had to learn cursive, and it's just, it's not a thing mm-hmm. at, at all anymore. Uh, how to use a rotary phone. That still freaks out kids. I love when parents uh, will post pictures of them, like, buying a rotary phone at some uh, store, like a thrift store, and then having their kids try to use mm-hmm. it. I, I think that's hysterical. Uh, how to uh, fix CDs that skip. That was a big thing for us. I don't know us. how to do that. I don't, yeah, I know. Yeah, you take it out and you got to wipe it down. Uh, oh, that's like, it? Yeah, that's usually it. Because uh, oh. usually they're, kink, 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 oh. and, and you, unless it's scratched. If it's scratched, you were completely hosed. Uh, to get a game cartridge uh, to work by blowing inside <laughs> of it. Oh, see, yeah. Gavin, you're not as uh, oh, young as still, I thought. Still do it, man. That's crazy. Programming a VCR, he knows. Uh, so these are all some of the things that we got to enjoy as an older generation that I am quite frankly surprised that you, Gavin, uh, had experienced. I caught well. the tail end of it. I think. Yeah, because some of the things that you don't know, I'm like, what? How? But then some of the yeah. things that you do know, yeah. I'm shocked. Anything by as well. that's out of, like, uh, mainly entertainment. Mm-hmm. Anything that's out of the Christian genre, you're. I really didn't get. I didn't get raised of. on, like, non-Christian music. So anytime somebody's like, oh, blah blah blah, blah this band, I'm like, ah, I'm not yeah. gonna be. I'm like not Paul able to. Oats. He's like. Like they're hauling oats. <laughs> oh, hauling oats, hauling, hauling yeah. Hauling oats, baby. Yeah, hauling, hauling oats was fun. Uh, I It's funny because my family was not a big fan of, like, Christian rock and stuff like that. Like, they uh, did not like uh, Striper mm-hmm. or thing. They didn't like a whole lot of, like, mainstream rock or Christian rock. It my w- parents had to research Skillet to make sure. Oh, did they really? To, like, make sure that they were... A Christian yeah. rock band. Yeah, and I know a lot of people levied stuff at them because they were playing shows with Three Days mm-hmm. Grace or whoever, you know, they were playing mainstream shows a lot of times. I think they read which the, I t- loved about the them. title of a song, you know, Whispers in the Dark. Yeah. And they were like, that does not sound. Mm-hmm. I think that's how they approached it. That, sure. that uh, Family Force 5 uh, oh, had, yeah. to, had to be analyzed before it was okay. I think- so your parents are there and they're pleated khakis listening to. No. Oh. But maybe a Family little. Force Five, and they're like, I don't know about this crouton and chapstick. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what or this is, soul glow activator. What is love addict really yeah. mean? Uh, yeah. yeah, I I understand that. Like, I mean, I would listen to lyrics and stuff like that for my daughter uh, for songs that I was like, oh, I want to make sure that this is listenable or should yeah. be listened to, like mainstream stuff or whatever. I think it's good to be yeah. cautious you have to. and Was careful. there ever one that yeah. you said no to? Hmm. Ooh. My daughter grew up mainly with Christian music and to the point where she, like Gavin, knew those references more so than uh, like some of her friends. And so mm-hmm. she got exposed in high school to different music that she wasn't used to. And so I can't remember of a specific song that we listened to. We're like, oh, no, that's not good. Um because she she even went into college not knowing a, a lot of different songs. And then when she got there, she found, like, all these indie artist girls, like, singer-songwriter stuff mm-hmm. that I'm like, ugh, not even lyrically bad. She was just into why. Taylor Swift, though, when she was itty-bitty. She was. Yeah, she was very much. that That is true. She was very so much into So you had them. to listen to it. Oh, you had to. I did. You had to listen to it to make and sure. And I think she was, she was on Jonas Brothers, too, uh, before they were a thing. Really? Like, yeah, she was That's ahead. Oh no, One say. Direction. She was is ahead. It? She was ahead of the curve on, on One Direction. Biggest bands in the world. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I had to listen to some of that stuff. Um, he had to. But, and, he, and, he, and she like Justin Bieber. Little bit. She wasn't a giant like, Bieber. Like, uh, you went honey, to give me a, a few more days of, of him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you claimed it was for your daughter. It, it was me. It was all <laughs> I me. Love your hair. I know. You're the best. We love you, Justin. He's over there singing with all the teenage girls. I'm not making that up. I know. That I did that. That is true. My, my wife, though, like, uh, would read books 
that she was oh, supposed wow. to read. That's and commitment. That's why I can't commit to that. So I just banned all books. Anything that wasn't the Bible we burned. Is there any book that she couldn't read that Marty said no to? Marty read The Hunger Games first. Uh, uh, that's worthwhile. For her. Because I'm like, hmm. when I heard the premise of that, I'm like, what? Kids, you know, fighting, killing Yeah, kids. Yeah. There's some stuff that's it's funny because even in high school, I remember reading some stuff that, like, man, I just, I don't totally feel like this is quote unquote appropriate. We're talking right. about some pretty serious stuff that, you know, maybe a parent would want to read. But then at the same time, like, I, if I was a parent, I wouldn't want to have to read Grapes of Wrath to make sure my kid could read it. Yeah. So. I, yeah. See, that was the thing. I was like, I'll do the music, Marty. You do the books. That's smart. Yeah. And when I when, when I listen to stuff now, though, there's a couple people on TikTok that do like, you know, uh, looking back at music they listen to as a kid and they hear it differently now and they show their face like, what? Uh, because, yeah, there was stuff I heard as a kid and didn't understand. And I see now as an adult why my dad was like, no, you can't listen to that. Are yeah. you kidding me? Like a winger song, uh, like a, a so catchy pop metal winger song. Is that uh, a band? Uh, yeah, it was a it was a 80s band, <laughs> uh, winger. Uh, the song's called 17. She's only 17. Like, Oh, oh well, no. yeah, and it's and yeah, and and, and it's it, her, her daddy says she's too young, but she's mm. old enough for me. You go, it's oh, rad. yeah, I get why that's a problem now. At the time, I'm like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> I'm 16. Stuff's that's great, that. you know. Like, uh, and so yeah, there was stuff like that. That's funny. Or like, you know, when you think about like Iron Maiden and songs like Number of the Beast, that one was a little more obvious. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe just. Avoid. Yeah, that one was that one was not like a lot of gray area uh, there. It so. is funny though to think about you know TV shows that I'm like excited for Bennett to see someday. Yeah, but most of the TV shows that I really like. Yeah, like I'm not letting him touch that till no. he's you know 16, 17, 18. Even even a show like Friends has so much stuff littered sure. throughout it that you're like I. I guess I don't I don't want my 14 year old oh, yeah. catching all these references mm-hmm. every day. My daughter used to watch The Simpsons with me before she was old enough to know stuff because it was a cartoon. So she just looked at it, you know, <laughs> and so and so I was great. But then when there's a point where you're like, oh yeah, this isn't good, man. Maybe I shouldn't be watching it yeah. either, you know. Uh, you definitely have those hypocrisy moments yeah. uh, with your kids. My wife was like, oh, Grease is on. We should uh, watch Grease together. Like, Terrible. no. Absolutely not. What is wrong? She's like, why? And I, I start listing all these things, and she's yeah. like, oh my gosh, you're yeah. right. Be- I remember for Christmas, my parents got me a tube TV to put in my bedroom, and it came with a built in VHS player. Yeah. And they got me grease. On, they did. On VHS. Yeah. I loved it. I watched yeah. it all the time. Yeah. They did not care. Yeah. But I don't know if they even realized that there was any i think back to all the things that i listened to and watched not that i was out yeah. there just watching horrible things uh-huh. or listening to horrible things but my parents weren't very intrusive with yeah, it yeah they were just like hmm. i wonder if well probably not danny ray but probably robin like i wonder if she looking at your life choices now and mm-hmm. like how mm-hmm. promiscuous you are right mm-hmm. exactly if she wonders did i do this yeah. to her <laughs> where like, did i go wrong? was this my, my fault the only thing i can think of that my dad was like absolutely not but my mom had no idea she never paid attention she just i mean i'd listen to music in in the car with her yeah. and she'd just be driving along she didn't pay attention but there was one i bought uh, you used to when CDs were a thing, you could buy just the single so it's a, a, of a song, so you didn't have to buy the whole album. And it was Cheryl Crow's If It Makes You Happy. If It Makes You yeah. Happy. And I bought that. Was there and, something bad in there? Uh, yeah. Anyway, Is it really? I didn't, I never, I, I just hear the hook. That's well, it. look it up later. Uh, anyway, so my dad was like, Robin. Why did you let her buy that? And she was like, wait, what? What's wrong with it? That's the problem. I mean, and that is the problem, honestly, with music and stuff like that, is you have all these adults writing music about adult stuff that kids then want to gravitate yeah. towards, and they're not ready for some of these things. And you just listen to it, and you don't think twice about well, and it. And I think back to, what you know, during the summer, my parents were over here by themselves. They didn't have any family to help with babysitting so they put me in summer camps and i remember going to a summer camp for probably three years this one summer camp and it was in downtown nashville and all the people that were in charge they would listen to pop- it wasn't a summer camp they dropped her off at a homeless I mean, camp let's be honest <laughs> um, but they the the people in charge they were they were kids themselves like yeah. probably 16 right, 17 right. 18 and they were listening to pop 
radio. So and and they would play it in the van as we're going to all these different mm-hmm. things for our summer camp. Well, I would hear it through that, and that's how I got introduced to it. My parents didn't care. That's how a lot of people find Christian music, though, and Christian radio, is they'll be driving with their kids, listening to the pop station or the rock station, and their kids are singing along with something, and they hear what their kid just saying, like, oh, holy moly, no, Mm -hmm. we got to not do this. And then all of a sudden, they're like, I need something wholesome in my life. And Mm -hmm. then they, like, scan around and find a Christian station, which Mm -hmm. is great. I mean, I loved, we talk about this all the time in, like, Support Drive. You look back and you see your kids singing the songs. And I love the fact that Haley didn't know a lot of the pop songs and wasn't into that culture mm-hmm. till later in life, you yeah. know, for her. I'm appreciative of my parents for the the way that they did things just because they 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 centered it all on, you know, faith and on God and all these things where it was it was it was very easy to to they serve faith up in a way and, and Christian music up in a way that when it was time to to take the the helm and make it my own, it was all there and it was all easy to find. So what's interesting too, is that I was the complete opposite, not in like where my parents are like all hail Satan. It's not like they're doing that, (laughs) but, but my dad was, my dad was into Led Zeppelin, Creedence Uh Clearwater, you know, the Beatles. And that's what I would listen to. My mom didn't listen to anything, but I still landed up in the same place Mm -hmm. as you. So it was, but my dad would mix in all of that stuff with like Southern gospel. I was gonna say like, so did, he did, was he, did he both. into uh, what, he loved, Gaithers? Yeah, uh, yeah, big time. Oh, sure. Yeah, but he would go from Merle Haggard and George Jones yeah. to the Gaithers to mm-hmm. Jimmy Swaggart to yeah, back to Led Zeppelin. So I had both. Yeah, um, yeah. My dad had a big country western music phase. Uh, to where we listen to country music every day on cassettes in the truck on the mm-hmm. way uh, to mm-hmm. to work because I used to work with him uh, and it's funny because I still remember this uh, he didn't spend money on a like a cassette box holder he had an old green sewing kit box that wow. my my mom had had <laughs> and so all of his cassettes were stacked in that <laughs> thing and so it would sit behind the seat in the truck and we'd have to get it out at lunch mm. and then we'd go through the cassettes and like cool. nice. those are some of the great memories uh, nice. like I have with my dad like music like he loved music it was it was really interesting to me um that I got to 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 be him be with him like right before he died um and it was interesting is we were talking about his life and life and stuff. And, and he's like, you know, I, I don't regret a lot of things. He said, but the only thing that I wish I had done differently is I wish I had done something with music. Hmm. He's like, I, I've, Your dad? Oh, yeah. He said, oh, I've wow. always loved music and I wish I had done something with that. Hmm. You know, it, that was his only regret. I, I was like, please don't say me. Please don't say <laughs> me. <laughs> the only thing I would change is have you a would girl. Think, though, that he would look at you and your heaven's fire yeah. situation and be like, That's you know what? Boy. I didn't really miss much. Yeah, maybe oh. maybe it's glad I missed out on that. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, too, though, in defense of, you know, like the Christian music that I grew up on, I think I caught on to when Christian music started to get pretty good yeah i'd say up until a certain point especially when we would do much older like time capsule oh Tuesdays, sure it was bad there was some <laughs> there was some bad christian music that i can understand why people didn't like d- weren't entertained by we, we were doing a bit the other day on the show about songs that you don't really you, you don't like their christian song but you know they're good mm-hmm. but you don't like it for you personally and i remember this lady email she never emailed me back i emailed her a nice note back because she was really offended by uh-huh. the fact that we didn't like strong uh and i emailed her back something really nice I, I took the high road and i didn't hear back from her so i was a little surprised by that so I was going through like our playlist looking for songs. Like there's one song that I know I didn't like, and it was like Josiah Queen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it wasn't like it's bad. It was just that it was dated. Like it's Americana, and Americana has already kind of passed. Um, but as I was going through all these songs trying to find one, like I'm like, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. I'm like, we're playing a lot of really mm-hmm. good music right now. I was telling Jeff, our music guy and our boss the other day, I'm like, man, I really like what you guys are picking. Uh, for the station, the new song uh, "Trust" is it by Megan? The truth. The truth. Yeah. What's her name? Megan. Megan Woods. Whoo! That's a that's a good song. And I haven't a, ingested that, it yet fully to know sure. it all, but I love what I hear. And it's cool too because some I I do think that it's hard to go from nobody knowing you to to having a song that everybody really likes, but like nobody could have named her 
before, yeah. you know, uh, six weeks ago. Right. And now, like, this might be my favorite song that we play on the station. Yeah, so it is good. I great. love that we're playing a lot of great music. Uh, Lady Rock, what do you got? Uh, I have news. Is that enough of a 15-minute tw- segue for you to have be positive? Yeah, that wasn't dark. That was just <laughs> From exploding pagers to here. Uh, no, I've got news on Josh Gad. He voices uh, Olaf, the snowman, in Frozen. Anna, Elsa, Sven, Samantha. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's Samantha. <laughs> anyway. That was an improv line too. Uh, they said like he was going through the parts and he just so was ri- like made a mistake or whatever, and so, so they kept it in. Love it. Well, uh, so he was recently doing an interview and he was asked about you know his experience with voicing a character that is huge, um, and he said that he regrets not doing it, uh, but. He regrets using his own voice, his actual talking voice. It's sad that's voice. his own voice. It's it's obviously ramped up a little, like to be more right. cartoony. But when you hear him right. in in interviews, you there's no mistaking it. Yeah. He says he'll go to the grocery store and he'll say something, and all the kids will like turn around because it sounds just like Olaf. That's true. Yeah, he and can't escape. Yeah, he can't escape it. Uh, another thing that he mentioned that I found interesting is he said that there is. In the works, Frozen 3 no. and 4. No. Awesome. Frozen, Frozen 2 was horrible. Yeah, I was looking. I okay, okay. Mm. let me let me go over this. You don't agree? No, no, no. I'll, Frozen I'll give it a take. Two. I'll give it a take. Here's the Frozen 2, the film synopsis, if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you ask me on, and guys. Wally, it's like, I don't know. There were flying unicorns. Oh, there's, there's a weird and then there's water horse. People yeah. that there's are out rocks. in the woods. Spirit. There's rocks that are talking. Yeah. Okay, so ultimately, here's the synopsis. Elsa... She uh, is not happy. She finds herself strangely unsettled after hearing a mysterious voice call out to her. Elsa travels to the enchanted forest in dark seas beyond her kingdom, an mm-hmm. adventure that soon turns into a journey of self-discovery. I didn't get that at all. No, it sounds like Elsa needed Jesus, too, because she wasn't <laughs> uh, like she happy wasn't in herself, wasn't content. No. You don't need rock people. You don't need a water horse. You need the Lord. It was... Uh, I think what it is is the first one focused more on the sisters. Yeah, Anna, great story. Anna and Elsa. Then the second one focused more on Elsa than and who they cares? did Anna. She's like, eh. so is the third one going to be more about Anna? I don't know. Maybe Olaf. Ugh, I Maybe would love Sven. that. Yes, yeah, Sven. Olaf is my favorite, but Olaf's he's my great. only favorite. I'm not a real big fan of the Frozen franchise, no. but I do you love Olaf. He cracks me up. Now, Gavin, your two cents. I was just saying my two cents is that, again, yes, I do think that you should uh, deliver a storyline that makes sense. The whole uh, nonsense where she's like, I am the fifth element. Uh, yeah, what? Thing. That that yeah. was silly. But we can all accept that that was dumb. Other than that, I actually had a lot of fun watching the movie because I think the characters are good. Their interactions are good. Obviously, that was Dumb. That was silly. But Olaf's still funny. They're still working on their sister to sister dynamic, which is an interesting thing. The dynamic where you've got uh, what's his face trying to propose, but she keeps getting distracted because she had years where she didn't have the ability to connect with her sister. They're still working through the lack of connection and the wow, trauma that comes really with that. Wow, you really remember all this? Uh, uh, it's a good movie. Uh, yeah, like I the, can't. The rock and roll song in the woods with the I deer can't singing. even. <laughs> So I, solid. I can't name a song from that until you just mentioned it. Then Into they the do. Unknown. They did a uh, oh, version yeah. of of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, wasn't it? Uh, Lost in the woods. Yeah, it does. It did have a kind of a Bohemian. Oh wait. Rap. Oh wait. The an original. I'm lost in the oh, because they what they yeah, did was, was it they good. did like a, like well, they did in roll. Bohemian Rhapsody where they have him being four different. Faces in the video, mm-hmm. so it was an original song. Okay, yeah, I can't tell you the music from the song. I, I, into the uh, unknown, the, the, you know. The, the, into, into the, the unknown. unknown. That's it. That's yeah, all that's I can it. sing then, from that. I can sing word one, for word. The first uh, one was "Let It Go." Yeah, I could sing that one almost word for word. Yes, yeah, the they they, they crushed that on one. The tonight, the, 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 you want to keep going? Not a footprint <laughs> to be to seen. be found. Mm. A king. Oh, see, <laughs> a kingdom of isolation, and it looks like. I'm the queen. Uh, don't so. use that for uh, uh, I'm marking it in my mind. Right? <laughs> like for years, I've had years of show. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I think the problem I think with some entertainment and media and movies and shows these days is that when you have something that's 
again, I'm not going to say that Frozen itself was like a new thing. Obviously, it's a pattern of Disney princesses and obviously, oh, yeah, the next princess. But when you have something that's new and mega popular and then you do the second version of that, because obviously you're jumping on the success of it. Like I did not care for um, and this is Marvel. So this is l less uh, oh, impactful. I know. But Guardians of the Galaxy was a new fun movie with all this 80s music yeah. and it was great and then they made a second one i'm like i just don't vibe with this one but it's hard to follow up something that is so fresh and so successful and still make it have the same level of fun impact do you as the think first that's one. possible for frozen three and four oh, this will be a test because oh, yes this i will do be a test it's, while I it's again you have the original challenge. the further away you get from it the right. harder it is to have that same mm. level of success the reason mm. there's only top gun one and two there's no need for another mission like but <laughs> if, it, if they do it i'll be one. if there's a third one i'll be there <laughs> The third will, one, will, the first one is a derivative of the, uh, the second one's a f derivative of the first one. The third one would be a derivative of that. And before you know it, you have uh, Fast and Furious yeah. 10. Oh, you know? it's ridiculous. There's, if we just get as to, ridiculous yeah. as the most recent Jurassic Park movie, which mm -hmm. Wally and Gavin told me Fantastic. I had to go to, told me it was a, cinema, a cinematic yeah, that's on masterpiece. Fantastic I go, dinosaur and there movie. were at least dinosaur three to five movie. different times I thought, I'm going to walk out. And what, the thing it was is, that bad. We're a year away from hyping up the next yeah. one that we get to be <laughs> excited about when another dinosaur movie. When I was in Hawaii, I got to see where they shot part of Jurassic cool. World. Yeah. Like they had, the, they still had the sets, the props there and the dinosaur and uh, some of the cages and stuff. Like, oh, that was, that was awesome. I mm -hmm. loved it. Maybe if you had done that, you would have had a new respect for it. No, it was just boring. The, the plot line, all of it was just dumb. And, it was. And that girl that's uh, Ron Howard's uh, daughter. Right. Yeah. Alice, yeah. Yeah. So she crashes. Remember, the parachute comes yeah. down, crashes out in the middle of the woods. She's got heels on. Yeah. And somehow she's able to make it and yeah. rescue people. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost she's... as bad as that lion movie that I went to go see. Do you remember oh, this? Yes. yes. That is atrocious. I've seen so clips of that. Bad. bad. It there is it nothing so good bad. about that movie. I mean, I had high hopes for it, but when the sixteen-year-old is out there and there are animals, wild animals yeah. everywhere, and she's fine. Yeah. No. It was the no. worst uh, animal movie was, I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. It was so. It was up there with the, the Jurassic Park movie. No, for sure. no, no, no. Not in the first same Jurassic ballpark. Park. Fantastic. There was another one that was great. Two was good. I'd say the first uh, Jurassic World movie was yeah, solid. Yeah, I think that one was really good. But then again, you're but right. This we next keep one, trying to when you say like when just stop. When you keep building on that. You say here's success. Now we're gonna keep staying in this yeah, world. Yeah, it's, it's it's getting it's getting too money hungry. Yeah, like just let it go. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I'd say if, the thing is, is if you're gonna do a third one here with Frozen, like d I, just let that be the wrap up. I yeah. think again, trilogies are a natural thing in the movie mm -hmm. industry. But let three be just mm. uh, that's honestly why, like Toy Story should have never kept going. Oh, I agree. Honestly, we were talking about yesterday the most overrated movies, and you were flabbergasted. Your flabber was gasted <laughs> when I flabber. told you about Top Gun made the list. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I forget, crazy. There was another one that you love that made the list. I, if they added Frozen to it, I'd be like, yes, it mm -hmm. was overrated. Oh, Frozen two for sure. Fro Frozen one Toy I thought Story was really good. Yeah, Frozen one great. Toy Story 4, yeah. no. Yeah. Toy Story 3, I also said no to because it train wrecked me. Yeah. When they're going down in that furnace, mm. and then Toy Story 2. <laughs> that was not meant for kids. When What's-Her-Face oh, the, is the, singing the... Sarah McLaughlin oh, when she yeah. loved me. Yeah. No! I liked 1 and 2. I thought 1 and 2 were great. I didn't care for one, 3. 1, fantastic. 2, it, I hurt, liked two. it hurt my Al's heart. Al's Toy Barn, I like that. Yeah, it hurt my heart. 3, once again, it hurt my heart. Four, I'm over it. Yeah. I'm done. Can't remember four was four. weird with Sporky, the... Sporky, Forky. Yeah, that was... Oh, a... I loved Forky. Oh, well, now she's back in. I always like the silly sidekick. I know you yeah. do. They That's why they up. make them. Yeah, and it uh, works. And, but now there is a new Toy Story coming out, right? Mm, yeah, I believe a five is yeah. in the making. What more can you do? It's like yeah. Frozen. What more can know. we do? Like, just try and do better at making new original stuff. They, they, yes. are, they are struggling... With the original movies, because they don't think they've done a really good job over the last pff, 10 years. Here's hoping that their stocks will just 
plummet. No, no, no let's not do that. Here's hoping. Let's not you do heard that. it here first. That's funny. Let's not what? Do that. Wally doesn't want Disney to plummet? I do not, actually. <laughs> I have a lot of stock in Disney that I need it to actually come I back. I got Boeing down. Now I know. I'm you've already dragged Disney. Boeing's name through the mud, which is killing. <laughs> you, all you're doing is prolonging the amount of time I work with you. Like, that's all you're doing. Like, this is going to hurt you. Uh, if, if these two stocks would come back, if you'd raise these stocks, I could Sell quit tomorrow. Sell your stocks and be done. No, because mm. I'm at a loss. I'm not selling my stocks. No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, Why? What is it? You're, you could be be like my parents. They're already retired. They don't need much. Why do you need so much? Why do I need so much? Yes. I need to make a living still. I'm still not even 60 yet. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Like I can't retire because I can't touch any of my retirement. If you touch your retirement you now, it gets cut in half almost, you, act you know. Six. Yeah. And so yeah, I act six. And so no, if I was 60, then yeah, I could. Um, but the longer you work, the more that you have for later on. What are you going to do on your 60th birthday? Are you going to be able to say that? Yeah, 60th. You yeah. can say that. I can say 60th. I just can't say 6th. So on your 66th birthday, what 66th. are you going to say? 66th. <laughs> uh, yeah, what yeah. are you going to say? I, I, I'm, are you invited? You're going to be like, uh, are, you, are you coming to my 66th? 66th birthday, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, yeah. You idiot. Jeez. <laughs> I'm so You're hoping, coming to my 66th birthday. I'm hoping that my buddy uh, Greg yeah, does something is. fun for his 60th next year so that we could go do something fun for that. I don't even know what I would do. I wonder what you said on your 6th birthday. 6th? Uh, yeah. I pooped did my pants? S- I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Did you say 6th? Or probably. did you say 6th? I probably always said 6th. It was your cheap mom back was then. like, Whoa. Yeah. yeah, it's not worth, worth <laughs> worrying with. <laughs> This a, my mom told me, she's like, honey, I, I love how you say the word sixth. Uh, you're going to have probably one bully in your life that uh, is going to make fun of you for this. Listen, and it's okay. It's the same thing you did with your daughter. Because she Haley, doesn't have a lot going on in her says, life. That's true. Library. She says oh, library oh, so at cute. 25. So cute. If girls say, the thing is, is if, if girls or women say something wrong, yeah. we're always like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Yeah. But when 55 year old men do it. Right. Then it's just, you know, you're just like lame. What yeah. about Haley's 26th birthday? Oh, well, that is coming up. I'll, Are you going to say her 20th? Happy 26th. <laughs> 26th. Like when you have like a on the candle, like if it says, I don't know, you just do numbers actually. Yeah. I don't know. He, It's like he leaves out the H. It's just right, I can't six say the, and then with the T. Yeah. Because it doesn't Sixth. make sense. Sixth. It's not, it sounds the same Sixth. to me. Sixth. I think that this is it tough because you're, you're just... You are just, like you are just choosing. Him. Yeah, you are yeah. choosing I know. to bully. No. Do you have any birthdays? No. You don't? Oh, well, there Someone you go. Someone celebrating up. their sixth birthday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to wish them a happy sixth <laughs> I birthday? wish I could. I can't. <laughs> I can wish you a sixth birthday. All right, that's going to have to do it for your aftercast, y'all. Thanks for being a potty. Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.